Okay, five sixes. We're looking at division now, and uh, right ahead of us we have a division problem, and it's eight divided by two. Well, we have eight, and we need to split it up into two groups. So a visual way to work this question out would be to create two groups and spread and separate the eight dots into the two groups. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. We've got four in each group, so that would mean our answer would be eight divided by two equals four. Okay, that works for when we do um, smaller sums, but it be, we develop a problem when we start to um, work out larger problems. Okay, so the way we set it out when we work out division sums, or the way we're going to learn how to work it out, is by drawing a shape like this, putting our 8 under here, and then we write our 2 on the outside, okay, a smaller number on the outside, and then we try and figure out how many times 2 goes into 8. Okay, and if we looked at our times tables chart, we'd go, there's 8, 2, and we go 4 goes into it, uh, sorry, 2 goes into it 4 times to get 8. Okay, so we would write our answer, therefore, before, and we'd write it right above it like that. Okay, we'll do some more examples. Okay, as you can see, we've got five more questions, but we're just going to work out the first three together, and then you're going to work out the remaining two. So our first sum is 84 divided by 4. Okay, and we have our 84 down here, our larger number down here, and we have our 4 on the outside. So once again, we can use our times tables chart to give us this answer, which is at the back of your exercise books. You can click in here and find in the four times tables where the answer eight is, and then go across to see how many times it went into it, and it was twice. So our answer above the eight would be two. And we're lucky enough that we know that 4 only goes into 4 once. So we have 4. How many times does 4 go into it? And it's once. So our answer equals 21. Okay, it gets a little bit trickier when our first number of our sum doesn't go into the larger number that we're dividing it by. So once again we put our larger number underneath and we put out what we're dividing it by on the outside. Now the 5 is larger than 4 so we can't actually put that into it. So we then go to 45. That number turns into 45 rather than 4 and a 5. Okay, so we then go back to our times tables and go down the fives column until we find the 45. And we realise that we go across and it goes into it nine times. So the answer up here, we would write nine. Nine in the tens column. We put that in the tens column, not in the hundreds, in the tens. Because nine goes into 45 five times. Okay, and then we have the one five left over at the end, which therefore, five goes into five once. So 91 becomes our answer. 455 divided by five equals 91. Okay, now this time we have our larger number is 72. And we just want to make two groups. Two groups of 72. Okay, now we we have seven, 
and we need to split that into two groups. Now we know that seven is an odd number, so it won't split evenly into two groups. At this stage, we know that going down our twos column, we got six and eight. So our closest one before busting is six, and it goes into it three times. So we need to write the number three on top of the seven, but also one is one carried over, one remain. So this one would have been in the tens column. So really, it turns this two now into a 12. So now we have 12 divided by two. So we'll go back to our chart, go down in our twos column, find 12, and it goes into it six times. So we write the six in our units column. So the answer for 72 divided by two equals 36. Now sometimes we have remainders and we don't have, we don't end up with whole numbers. So in this case we've got nine divided by two. And we know when we look into our chart, we go down the twos column, there isn't a nine there. But the closest one without being over, it's eight. And it goes into it four times. So we need to write that four in. So we get the four and we put it above it. And we know that four groups of two equals eight and eight is one less than nine. So there'd be one left over. And we write our answer like that. Four, remainder one. And a way we could draw that was if we had nine of these little circles and we put them into two groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're even, there's four in each group but we've got one left out, and we can't evenly spread that one, so it has to stay out. So that becomes our one remainder. Two, uh, nine divided by two equals four, remainder one. Our next one begins by having 11 divided by three. Okay, we realize that we can't put, we can't divide one by three because one is a smaller number, so then it generates into 11. So now we need to go down the threes multiplication column to find the number closest to 11 without going over. So we see the nine here is below 11 and 12's too high. So we go back to nine and it is, three goes into it three times. So we come back and we put the number three in the units column because it only goes into 11 three times. But there are remainders because three goes in three times that creates nine and we need to come up however many to get to eleven. So we go, we count up maybe using our fingers, ten, eleven. So we have to go up two more times which meant there are two remainders. This is displayed here. As you can see there are three groups and we've got three in each group evenly but we could not separate these two evenly into the three groups. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So three, remainder two. Now this time we need to carry some through as well as have remainders. So we've got 77 divided by six. We know that six goes into seven once. And then when we count on from six to get to seven, we realize that there is only one remainder. Okay, so now this number becomes 17. Okay. Now when we go through the 6 table column, we go 6, 12, 18, we've busted. We're above 17, so we need to go back to the 12, go across, and find the 2. So, 6 goes into 17 twice. And it got us to 12. So we need to count on from 12 to find out how many remainders we have. So 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17. We had five remainders. So 77 divided by 6 equals 12. Remainder, 5. Okay, five sixes. That's a huge amount of information to take in. Use this YouTube to go back and re recap on anything you found really tricky. And remember to ask lots of questions. And don't forget, go Tigers!